Hello, I'm Sam Henry. I'm a particle detector scientist at Oxford University. I work for the Atlas experiment at CERN. Right now I'm stuck at home due to the coronavirus, but I can give you a tour of CERN without leaving my house using the Atlas Craft Minecraft model. Anyone with Minecraft installed on their PC can explore it too. If you've seen this video about Atlas Craft, you'll know there's lots of interesting rooms to explore and games to play, but it's not immediately obvious how to access them. Here's how to do it. First, go to the website atlascraft.web.cern.ch. This has full details of the project. Click on download, download Atlas Craft. This takes you to a page where you can download the 74 megabyte zip file. When you've unzipped that, launch Minecraft. As Atlas Craft was built in an earlier version of Minecraft, don't run the latest version, it won't work. Instead, you need version 1.12. You need to copy the unzipped folder containing the Atlas Craft map to the saved games directory. Here I've just set this to the desktop. Now we can start a game. When you first start Atlas Craft, it will put you inside a building called the Globe. This is a big exhibition hall. In the real CERN, this hosts public events and houses the Universe of Particles exhibition. In the Minecraft version, it has information about the game. Let's now go outside and follow the path to the Atlas building. If you're new to Minecraft, you move around using the keys W, A, S and D and jump with the spacebar. You move the mouse to look around and when we encounter a switch or button, use the right mouse button to operate it. Or set up a games controller as I have here. I was new to Minecraft and it took me a while to figure it all out. I tried playing the normal game but didn't get very far before I was killed by zombies. Fortunately, there aren't any zombies in Atlas Craft. I guess that's an opportunity for an enterprising games developer. Take our map and make a game where zombies chase you around the CERN tunnels. We can look back and see the outside of the globe. It's the big CERN landmark. Ahead is the Atlas building with the colourful mural on the side, a picture of the detector that lies 100 metres below, and a tank of liquid nitrogen to the left. CERN is of course home to the Large Hadron Collider, the world's biggest atom smasher, where we accelerate two beams of protons in a 27 km ring to very close to the speed of light. They're then made to collide at four experiments around the ring. One of these is Atlas. This is the Atlas Visitor Centre. On the right we have a model of the detector and a map showing all 38 countries involved in Atlas. We can see the control room through the glass to the left. To get in, we go this way. When the experiment's running, there's people on duty here 24 hours a day to keep the detector running. They operate shifts. The shifters have to check the data's being recorded, check all the sub-detectors operate as they should, and make sure any problems are quickly dealt with. And they typically post regular updates to their Twitter accounts. When the real collider's running, this is as close as we can get to the detector. In Minecraft we can get closer, so let's now go and take the lift underground. If you visit the hall to the right, you'll see the shaft hole and the crane that was used to install the detector. But we're going to take the lift which is through these doors. You use the right mouse button to press this control to open the door. Then you need to be quick, quicker than me into the lift. You can also take the stairs, but be warned, there's a lot of stairs. The floor of the Atlas cavern is 92 metres underground. Now we're underground. There are many rooms and passages you can explore, but I'm going to go straight to the Atlas cavern and see the detector. In the real thing, the tunnels are not lit by flaming torches, but I guess the modellers had to use the options that Minecraft could provide. Here we are, this is the Atlas detector. Let's look around. The passage to the right leads to the LHC tunnel, which continues for 27 kilometers. Now if we press this button, it will change the scale so we can see it in more detail. Atlas is 44 meters long, 25 meter diameter. It's as big as a cathedral, like Notre Dame in Paris and weighs 7,000 tonnes, about the same as the Eiffel Tower. The really interesting stuff is inside, and we can open it up by pressing another button. Here we go.
At the centre where the beams collide is the inner detector, where layers of silicon record the tracks of all the particle debris flying out from the collision. Then there are the electromagnetic and hadronic calorimeters that absorb the jets of particles and measure their energy. The toroidal magnets generate the required high magnetic field, and the muon spectrometer catches the muons that can penetrate through everything else. From here, you can take the lift up to a higher level to get a better view. On the wall to the left, there's more information explaining everything, and you can explore rooms to learn about the workings of the detector components. Take a train ride through the semiconductor tracker detector, walk through a giant proton and neutron, and play a game to learn how quarks hadronize. There's a lot to explore and learn. Atlas is a big detector. But there's even more to see back on the surface. Let's now go back to the globe and explore some more of CERN. There's a button here to take us there. Sadly, such a teleport isn't available in the real CERN. We're now back in the globe. Let's go outside again, but this time instead of going to the Atlas building, we'll go the other way. Atlas is a huge experiment. It involves some 3,000 scientists, but it is just one of the experiments that happen at CERN, and there are thousands of other people working on the site, scientists, engineers, administrators, many others. The big vertical blue lines you can see ahead are beacons to guide you to something interesting. They're very useful as it's a big site and it's very easy to get lost, both in the Minecraft model and the real thing. We're now crossing the main road and tram lines. In real life, you should of course first look both ways and take care to avoid being hit by a tram. On the right, we have the Esplanade des Particules with all the flags of the CERN member states. A few hundred metres further along, the road crosses the border into France, or you can go the other way and take a tram to downtown Geneva. Ahead is the main entrance to CERN. In the real world version, there's an amazing exhibition centre here called Microcosm. It's well worth a visit. It guides you through the journey of the protons at the LHC, starting from a bottle of hydrogen. In this version, we have a display of the particles in the standard model and the famous Lagrangian equation. And ahead, there is a map of the Geneva area showing how the LHC crosses the French Swiss border. Now we have to go through this door. And if I remember correctly, we go down this corridor, then downstairs, and outside another door. It's a bit of a maze. The Atlascraft map was built by students from schools across the UK, with help from physicists at Oxford and Birmingham. And the scale of the model they've made is very impressive. You can follow these corridors for hours and explore hundreds of offices, then struggle to find the way out. Given the huge number of people working at CERN, both staff members and visiting researchers from around the world, the site does resemble a small town. It has restaurants, a hotel, a bank, post office, hundreds of office and laboratory buildings, most of which are just as grey and cuboid in real life as they are in Minecraft, as you can see if you tour the site using Google Street View. CERN is over 60 years old. It was founded in 1954 with a vision of promoting world-class science and European unity, and it's grown over the years. In 1976, the Super Proton Synchrotron, a 2km ring, started operation. Then in the 1980s, the 27km tunnel was built, which first housed the LEP Collider. And then the LHC was constructed and saw first collisions in 2010. The building to the right has some information about how Tim Berners-Lee invented the World Wide Web here in 1989. But we're going the other way. We're now entering the main building with the bank, post office and other services. The main restaurant is this way. As well as the place to get your steak and pommes frites, the restaurant is the place to meet people, where experimentalists can chat with theorists about the latest results or with engineers about the plans for the next upgrade. Many innovative ideas were first thrashed out over a cup of coffee or a beer in this room. The real thing is usually more crowded than this. On a nice day, you can take your lunch to eat outside, while admiring the large dipole magnets parked on the grass. And this is the route to the final stop on our tour, Building 40. The buildings at CERN are all given numbers, while the streets are named after famous scientists. We're now approaching Route Marie Curie. To the right, we have the main hotel, where we stay when visiting CERN, 500 beds. Building 40 hosts the offices of many of the physicists working on the Atlas experiment. This is where they analyse the data that was recorded by the underground detectors searching for events that show the signature as something new, something that can't be explained by our current model. This is how the Higgs boson was found in 2011. 
If you explore this building, you'll learn all about it. But this is where this tour ends. There's a lot I haven't shown you. If you want to see more, download the map and get exploring. There's also a game you can play. Hidden around the map are all the standard model particles. See if you can find them and take them back to the globe. One final tip, when you get bored of walking around the full CERN campus, if you take the stairs up to the room on the first floor of the globe, there's an array of buttons to let you teleport to any room on the map. Have fun.